Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So today we are going to be giving the same treatment that we gave to the static AA a few months back to the mobile AA. And if I refer to it as MAA, that's also mobile AA, just heads up. Cause I know that sometimes I throw some acronyms around that some people might not understand, especially if you're newer to the game. So we're going to be stacking Tech 2 MAA versus their big brothers with the missiles, lightning, and Gatling guns. So with that, let's get into it. All right. So first, we got to talk about some stats. We love stats and science. But do you know one thing that is even better than stats and science? I know this is going to blow your mind. It's actually hitting that like and subscribe button. So if you guys uh, really like this kind of content, uh, specifically around the science videos within Forge Alliance Forever, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It recommends this to more people. And I've got a lot of content like this that are on the channel. It should be all within the same playlist. So if you're looking for more stuff like this with unit breakdowns in depth, um, and my process has definitely matured over time, thanks to some of y'all lovely people helping me out, definitely hit that like and subscribe button and also check out some of the other videos that might be recommended to you or at the end of this video. But real talk on the stats front, uh, the Tech 2 Flak, very, very similar. If you didn't watch part one of the series, I'll link it down in the description below where we kind of took a, a little bit of a look at the Tech 2 Flak. But by and large, these guys have very, very similar damage per second. They all cost the same. Um, they have similar uh, AOEs as well. But as you're looking through the stats for the Tech 3 units, I'm sure y'all noticed something weird. Anyone? Bueller? And the eagle-eyed of you might have noticed that the Bouncer has lower damage per second than the Banger, which makes sense because, you know, everybody hates Bouncers, but banging is definitely a dude's favorite thing to do, although Banging often does lead to bouncing, and I'm starting to see the motivation of these unit names that the devs had. But regardless, I believe that this is incorrect on the DPS side based on the results of the testing. I just wanted to point that out um, to y'all. And if you guys are using the unit database, I believe that this is a little bit of an inconsistency. And some of it might be down to the actual number of missiles that are fired and the multiplication of the damage of those missiles. But regardless, I think that this is incorrect, and I believe that the Bouncer does, in fact, have more damage per second than the Banger. But mass and energy cost, identical across the board at a 5 to 1 ratio for Tech 1 to Tech 3, which is actually higher than their land-based counterparts, sitting at roughly 2.5 to 4 to, 4, uh, to 1 ratios. And uh, we're going to come back to that a little bit later, but I did want to highlight this right now. So first, let's look at the actual tests. Well, actually, this would be second. But stacking up FLAC versus some ASF, we get the following data set measuring how many seconds the particular unit takes to destroy the enemy target, which is in this case 25 ASF, starting a specific measurement away from the flak with a patrol path set over a specific path. So if y'all are wondering why I have all these walls in my video, it's so that I can measure out exactly where the ASF start, what their patrol route is, to try and eliminate as many variables as possible. As before, in our static tests, the flak really shines with its AOE, exploding shells, mimicking flak shells used widely in World War II, except with a little bit of a futuristic spin. This AOE leads to some variability in performance with the more likely results located in the larger squares that you see on the data set and the lines representing some of the extremes of performance. So because of that AOE, if a cluster of flak shells just happens to hit a large cluster of the ASF in one spot, that can lead to a more extreme result. And if that never happens, then you get a more extreme result on the worser side. And to test this unit against more health and with an entirely different purpose, we put them up against broadswords yielding this data set. Uh, we're measuring once again in seconds to kill the broadsword attack. That's the most, that's the best way I've been able to find to measure the actual real world performance. Uh, we've put the units under shields to get an accurate look at their damage per second and effect that the AOE has on this engagement, but this doesn't take health into account. And again, we're going to talk more about that later, but right now we're just focusing on the testing. So that was Tech 2. Now, Tech 3 performance. I ran the Tech 3 mobile units through the same battery of tests against air, air superiority fighters or ASF. Apologies for the acronyms and against the broadswords. And the results just speak for themselves. And I'll put them on screen against the flak results. 
And once again, we're measuring in seconds to kill. Mass for mass, Flak absolutely wipes, wipes the floor with the tech three units from an overall damage perspective. Um, but knowing, knowing the difference between the unit tiers, this is to be expected. I did a video a while back on tech one versus tech three units. And I talked about how the primary benefit of tech three was to have a larger amount of damage per second condensed in a more condensed unit that couldn't be withered away quickly. So think um, experimental units versus tech one strikers. That was one of the comparisons I used in that video. Once again, I'll link that down in the description below if you're not curious, but I beat that topic to death um, in that video. So we're gonna talk about it here, but if you want a more detailed look at it, go ahead and look at that video. So I believe what holds true for other units as you jump from tech two to tech three uh, actually does not hold true for mobile anti-air. It is 100% expected to lose some efficiency when it comes to damage per second over mass or health over mass. And I've, again, talked about this in a previous video, but I wanna give a couple of pertinent, pertinent examples here. If you guys are new to the channel and not familiar with DPS over mass or health over mass, they are two measurements that I use to calculate the efficiency of mass invested for how much damage per second or how much health or how much range or stuff like that that you actually get out of a unit. So for this example, let's look at the Aeon faction. Now I'll throw the data up on the screen as, I found, as found in the FAF unit database. So predictably, you see a drop off in efficiency in most areas when moving from tech two to tech three, which means lower amounts of damage per second per mass invested um, with a handful of exceptions. But remember, moving from tech two to tech three is not necessarily to get more efficient from, uh, from a DPS or health perspective. The goal is to condense that damage per second into a unit that can't be withered away. So for instance, 10 strikers, will do x amount of damage but once you kill that strike one of the strikers that dps value drops if you have a brick though that brick is going to continue outputting the same amount of damage per second the entire lifespan until it is actually killed so that's the whole goal of moving to tech three and while we do see a drop off in land and navy um, and even air and to some extent the drop off is literally a cliff whenever it comes to mobile anti-air Damage per second over mass is roughly cut by nearly 75%. And if we compare that to other units within the Aeon faction, the max reduction is just under 40%. And in other instances, it actually has an increase in efficiency. But damage per second isn't everything, right? Like health has gotta be a little, oh, uh, oh, uh, it's no better. <laughs> We see a drop off of over 50% here and the rest of the unit types are trading back and forth um, as far as some are less efficient, others even becoming more efficient. And the range here is the, the range of attack for the mobile AA or the MAA is the only one that is on par with another transition, which would be uh, the battleship. So I think that this straight cliff in efficiency really causes the tech three units to be genuinely less appealing here. Now, there are other instances throughout a faction where you know you can stack an equivalent number of rhinos up against an equivalent amount of loyalists and the rhinos will probably slug it out relatively well. But as we saw in our previous test, that is absolutely not the case with uh, T2 MAA flak versus tech three MAA, whether it be cougars or bouncers or whatever. And I think that for this example, let's use uh, the Cybran. So to get the bouncer to be on par with the banger, um, and it really sounds like I'm marketing two porn stars right now, we have to build seven of the tech three unit to get around the area of the 10 flak that we tested previously. So remember our ratio earlier of five to one, it means that for mass that you are actually investing, you can build five bangers for the cost of one bouncer. But in order to get equivalent performance, you actually need to build seven bouncers in order to get the same amount of performance out of uh, 10 bangers. Now this holds true for the other factions as well, taking between seven, six and seven tech three mobile AA to match the performance of the tech three units. So let's loop out, let's loop back now to our point about tech three being able to put out damage per second longer because of the higher HP pool. Now, Tech 3 Mobile AA does have a higher HP pool than Tech 2 Mobile AA, but it is nowhere near as pronounced. 
And if we actually take these units outside of the shields in order to measure how they perform whenever their health is put on the line, this tells the exact same story as we saw earlier, requiring several more units on the Tech 3 side to make up for the difference on Mobile Flak. Um, looking at this, I believe that Tech 3 MAA might need to be tweaked here on, on these tests. So it's really, really difficult, honestly, at the end of the day to recommend spending five times the mass on something that gives 50% more DPS at reduced AOE and double the health at best. And so the question here isn't necessarily are Tech 3 units better? If you per, if you compare one flak versus one Tech 3 MAA, the Tech 3 MAA is going to be better, but the question is rather, is the premium for these Tech 3 units actually worth it? And in this case, I do not believe that they are. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Make sure to tell me how wrong I am in the comments down below. I always love hearing uh, from y'all and I actually learn a lot from the comments as well. And a lot of the commenters can highlight some things that I might have missed. So go tell me where I'm wrong down in the comments below. There might be other people that have already done so. So go check out their comments as well in order to get a more holistic story. And with that, I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.